to start with the American League East here. We'll go around the horn with some of our baseball analysts. Dad, let's start with you. You're always locked into baseball. Any value in some of these teams in the American League East to win the division, win the World Series? What do you see? Well, listen, um, I don't think the Yankees are going to win the division. So I said that from the beginning. This is another smoke and mirrors team. They got a player, Aaron Hicks. They're not starting him. He's pissed off. They don't know what to do. They got they 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 are they they got so many problems in that locker room because nobody cares on that team. They don't care about winning. They they care about the first and the fifteenth, making money, getting their checks. They go their own way. You look you look at the start the Tampa Bay is off to right now, seven and zero. You know Kevin Cash, great pitching, timely hitting. I don't know how they put this team together season after season. They're always competitive. You know, they always got eight guys in there throwing 97 miles an hour. I don't know where they get them. I think Kevin Cash uh, just goes, I think he's got a tree. I think he's got a pitching tree. They must have a magic pitching tree, the Rays, and they go every season and they shake it and guys fall out throwing 98 for two innings. I don't know how they do it. And uh, even you look at their lineup, it's not imposing. You know, but they're scoring runs. They got they got so many great pitchers to come in. And then you never even worry about injuries with them because everybody is pitching like three innings. So somebody gets hurt. Well, bring in somebody, somebody else. So uh, the Rays are a great value here. I think they have a heck of a shot to win the division. Um, I don't like the I don't like the Toronto team, right? I don't like their makeup either. So I don't like the Yankees. I don't like Tor- Toronto. A bet that I would make to make the playoffs is the Orioles. Uh, the, there's something magical about this team. Uh, Sheriff, I don't know what it is. On paper, they don't have really good pitching. They don't have a closer, but they continue to play together. They play hard. They're very young. They win games. So I like the Orioles uh, to, to somehow sneak in and make the playoffs with a new playoff format. But um, there's a lot of value in Tampa Bay right now to win that. Division. This is a very long season, right? We're seven games in, but uh, I like I I like Tampa. There, Red Sox are going nowhere. Forget them. And um, you look at the Blue Jays. I mean, they uh, again with the Yankees on paper, right? They ought to win a hundred games, but and they should they should be right there with the division. If you were rating this on paper, Tampa Bay is going to struggle to make the playoffs, and so is the Orioles. Red Sox are out. Forget about that. So I, I really like the value here of Tampa Bay to win the division. I don't AL, see AL I don't see any value. They're plus one ninety to win the division. So I mean, you're base. You're not even getting two to one. The Blue Jays are plus two thirty. The Yankees are plus one sixty. There's just not a lot of value in any of that. If you kind of like the Orioles, just put a couple bucks on plus twenty two hundred for the Orioles to make a run and win the division. Although they probably aren't, aren't going to. Uh, Sheriff Clark, you see anything here that you like? Uh, not really. You know, it's I always get a kick out of talking about winning divisions and making the playoffs in, in Major League Baseball when it's it's April. <laughs> uh, you, you know, I, I don't I don't count anybody out here. You you can look at Boston and say, well, Boston's not going to do anything. We just don't know. It's, it's a long season. However, that being said, obviously the Rays are off to a hot start win that division until somebody actually does it for heaven's sakes they have the experience they have the bats they have the pitching it's april let the weather get a little warmer let their starters be able to come in and go a few innings and as we move into may like i said the first marker for me and this is just me is let's see where people are on memorial day and all i want if i'm any of these clubs in major league baseball you know if you're not like tampa bay and jumping out to a 7 uh, start just hang around 500 at at Memorial Day, and then hope you know at the onset of the summer you can you can get hot and you can go on some winning streaks. So I see the Yanks are still going to win that division. So can I, can I can I just make a comment here? Okay, so Sheriff Clark comes on right, tries to show me up today. Comes on, is all decked out, is Cubs uniform right, all decked out, looks really good right, got his guys Cubs logo on. Blows the screen out. Sheriff, I got this little blue shirt on, but see, there's a little <laughs> thing here. Yeah, I it saw says, it. It says Houston Astros World Series champions. See, champions. Now, 
I don't have the big shirt on today with the big logo <laughs> and the hat and everything. Else. It's a little logo. It's a World Series champions. I just want to point that out. You know what? Uh, and I, that, that didn't get by me. I always look at your <laughs> logos and stuff. I go, yeah, see, rub my nose in it. But, you know, here's what I like. I like when the start of a season comes and the, the previous year's champion, the manager or the coach comes in and throws the damn trophy in the garbage and says that was last year. <laughs> this is a new year. That's humility. Right. Humility from John Fredericks and, and David Clark there. Uh, Patrick, no, you're not going to find humility here now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Patrick, Tampa Bay off to a hot start. I know Clearwater is pretty far from you, but I'm just here to do a little temper- temperature check. Anybody excited about the Rays down there? <laughs> <laughs> this is, is, is going to fall in that fan. FAU University of Miami category where where you're going to get a you're going to get a more furious fight over you know, reservations at PF Changs, then you are going to get anybody <laughs> who's going to really care too much about professional sports down here. You got to understand something about professional sports down here in South Florida. Nobody really cares unless you're in the championship. And then if you lose, they just dirt you. They never cared about you th- until that point. And as soon as you're in it, then they're, the, they're, they're the greatest fans you've ever seen, or they just ditch you. So well, tell, me you about, get. tell me about the, uh, Tampa Bay Lightning because I was down there during a Stanley Cup run they had and of course you said when if they're in the championship you know it's the Stanley Cup finals they go wild but I, I think they got a lot of support down there a, a hockey team for heaven's sakes well Tampa's also a little bit different from Miami and South Florida South Florida is just you, you, you've probably never seen as many self-important people unless you know outside of Hollywood California they've got their own things going on Tampa's a little bit different of a place um so, yeah, I would absolutely suspect that there's a lot more support in a, in a Tampa Bay area, Tampa Bay, St. Pete. You got a lot to draw from down here. There's just so much to do and nobody really cares unless you're a winner. And then when you are a winner, they still don't even know who anybody on the team is. Has, has, has anybody <laughs> here has anybody here actually been like me to that stadium in, in, in St. Pete? Has actually anybody been there? That has got to be the no, no. worst baseball stadium right now in the mid. Basically, it's not a baseball season. It, 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 here's what it is. It's the cement truck masquerading as a ballpark. That thing has got to be, the, it's ugly, it's uncomfortable, it's nasty. They got, they got, they got, they got cockroaches running, running around. It's one of the nastiest pl- 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 places to see a, see a game. It's like one big cement pit. And uh, with all the nice ballparks now, that thing, I mean, Tampa's not... But they they need to find the money to get like a stadium in in Tampa, which is a, re, a real baseball stadium. That thing is a joke. Tropicana although, Field there. Although, although when they're they're doing the Rays thing at you know and and a night game and they get a rally going and they're doing the Rays thing where they put the Rays out. Okay, that's pretty neat. Other than that, I wouldn't take Sammy the cat to that <laughs> park. Yeah, but John, that's, yeah. that's sort of like a nightclub that you know. When the lights are down, it looks phenomenal. It's a beautiful place. And then when you're there at three o'clock in the morning cleaning up and the lights go on, you see all the gum on the floor, the cigarette stains, the vomit all over the place. You know, it's like, it's, it, that's what happens. It's, it's a yeah. show. Yeah, yeah I, you, Nate and I have worked in uh, oh, yeah. some late night places there and you shut, you turn those lights on and um, you're like, oh, oh, that, I, that's that's vomit. Okay, okay. let's <laughs> Go get the mop. Uh, who this this guy's sleeping in the chair? Where's he been? He needs to go. Uh, so yeah, it can it can get a little rough there. Three four a.m. Um, I will say one thing about Fort Lauderdale. I was down there in October during the Astros Yankees or Astros World Series. So um, Astros Phillies, and I had my Astros gear on. And I was running and um, down the kind of strip there, and some a bunch of dudes in a convertible waved me down and they're like, "Oh hey, come over here." And I went over and to say hi, and they went, "You suck!" And then they drove <laughs> off. <laughs> uh, and they, they drove off, and they said, "They yelled, go Yankees!" So maybe there's some, uh, maybe there's some New York fandom down there. But um, uh, yeah, but, just a little they, bit. Yeah, just a yeah, little yeah, bit. Just a little bit. But All right, definitely so who's not. our who's our, let's let's make our picks for the AL AL East winner. I like Tampa plus one 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 ninety, Jack. Um, the Blue Jays. I like the Blue Jays more like plus 550 to win the league, but you know, sure, whatever, plus 230 or whatever to win the division. Nate? 
I like the Blue Jays as well. Clark? Bronx Yankees. Bombers. All right. New Go York. ahead, Jack. Okay. Okay, so um, before we get into the Central, and we'll go through that quick because nobody really cares about the Central and the Guardians, <laughs> why don't you tell us, Dad, about Ignite 45? Yeah, tell you what, if you want a small business today, you got to be in the social media game, you got to be in the digital game. And Ignite 45, Ignacio Falco started this company to help small businesses. He's part of the Patriot economy. This is a wonderful guy, and he really knows what he's doing, and he's, and he, and he's affordable, and he does great work. He revitalized our sites. Um, and it's, it's not very expensive, but here's what you do. You go to ignite45.com, ignite45.com, check your, the, here's what they'll do. They'll do an audit. Like they'll look at your website. They'll look at your social media. Doesn't cost you anything. And then they'll come back and say with their recommendations and you have no obligation. Doesn't even cost you anything for that. Worst case is you're going to get a deep analysis of where you are right now, where your company is on social media. He's just a great guy. These people that start businesses that all they want to do is help other small businesses. This is what drives the economy. This is what binds us together. So you got a small business. Now it doesn't matter how big or small it is. You got to have a social media plan. Go to ignite45.com, ignite45.com. Do it now. Say that Godzilla sent you and boom, you're going to get a hundred dollars off your first order but get the evaluation done. See where you stack up. See how you can do better to drive your business. Ignite45.com. And thank, we want to thank Ignacio at Ignite45 for uh, partnering with us. Nate, I want to start with you here, AL Central. Why don't you do a little preview for us, then we'll go around the horde with our, our big winners for the American League Central. Okay, so for the, for the AL Central, it's, you know, it's, it's a lot like all these divisions where it's you know a couple teams kind of at the top and then everyone else sort of um battling for scraps it's pretty much cleveland is the clear favorite at plus 120 we have minnesota twins at plus 170 white Sox at plus 320 and then it's you know then it's the outliers detroit and kansas city at uh 40 to 1 and 50 to 1 respectively uh i mean from my perspective i'm pretty low on the white Sox, so they're out for me as sort of a sneaky sneaky team i think it's probably the twins are sort of where i've actually bet money on them um at, at plus 200 so i'll probably just stick with that as my sort of like initial bet at now they're at plus 170 um you know maybe they lose a couple games and you can get closer to two to one again but i kind of like the twins doing the al central just just to start off this whole conversation dad you're a big twins guy carlos correa down there huge fan screw of the, the twins what they're what they're doing down there why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about why you know what? minnesota screw might the, win the division screw the twins screw the tw twinkies correa went 0 for 5 last night this this guy's a 260 hitter make it trying to trying to make 50 million dollars a year give me a break <laughs> right you're you got all kinds of injury problems i'm sick of him right i can't stand the twins anyway here's my pick it's got real value i love the white Sox to win this division Cleveland's tough. I like the young team. I will like the spirit. But Chicago's got really good front line starting pitching. And uh, they got they got three, they got three monster starters, right? So you give them there. They hit a little bit. They had defensive problems last year. I think they fixed some of those holes. Um Graveman's gotten off to a tough, tough start, but he used to play for us. You know, he's 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 better than he's been in the in the last couple of days. He can end up being what one of their closers along with a guy from Oakland. So um, I, I, I really like, look, when you look at starting pitching in a division like the central, you know, give me a team with three solid starters that I know are going to go, you know, six, seven, eight in six, seven innings every day. And, you know, give you 15, 16 wins uh, at plus three thirty. I love the white side. In fact, of all the plays other than my team Astros, which I bet every year to win the World Series, no matter what, uh, that's my biggest play. I love the White Sox. Plus, I bet them at 350. I love the White Sox plus 350 to win that division in there. The thing is, that there's nobody in there. I mean, I, I'm not going to bet the Twins and what, Cleveland? I mean, maybe. A good good young team. You got, you got two teams, you know, Kansas City and the Tigers. The only te teams the Tigers beat is... is the Astros, that's it. It's all they beat. Uh, they don't play them enough. So I love White Sox in there, plus 330. I don't so see. We talk well, about okay. culture mattering. Okay. 
let me let me uh, we'll get to you nate because yeah. i want to just point out something that was just totally factually in- inaccurate that uh dad said that the white Sox through eight games have the worst era in the league at 770 so those frontline starters are not exactly bringing the heat early on they're the third best hitting team right now in the majors so i don't know what you see in the pitching but they can hit you're right about that uh go ahead with the culture matters nate then we'll get to sheriff clark uh, yeah, so so we're high on the White Sox and and culture matters and blah 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 and they're a year removed from firing Tony Larusa after just a completely disastrous run where he almost destroyed the team because he uh, sucks. Like, they fired right. his ass because he sucks. Yeah, but like now you're saying like oh like now they're just going to be better because like like solving like a manager is like the only problem they had. But they, they, they look they had a lot of problems and like Sheriff Clark says you know we're 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 eight games into this season Chicago's three and five. I like their starters. I think they're going to get better. Graven's going to get better. Their bullpen's going to get better. So, but you know what? They fired Russo because he sucked. He was a bad choice. Too old. He had he had all great players. He couldn't win. The guys and the guys the guys ancient right out. And look, you got to win. Get you got to win. Right. That's why I got to get to the Titans because you're the one that started it. Right? No, I didn't. Yes, no. you did. No, no, no we're not talking about the football. The Titans. We're not talking about you started the Titans. No. Because they fired, the show. they fired John Robinson because he sucked. I'm tired of these guys running around seven years, eight years, trying to build a rise. Go and fire them. Bring in somebody different who can <laughs> win. That's what that Russo was dreadful. So they got rid of him. I like the White Sox. We're not uh, talking about football right now. So don't do that again. Um, so Sheriff Clark, any thought to the White Sox here and their reinvigorated culture uh across town well one of the things i'll disagree or give, give a little pushback here on what john just said you know players win ball games you know managers they can come and go i mean Larusa had a bad year last year but the two previous seasons he brought that organization back so give him some credit uh as i look at this division though you know you talk about a nondescript division None of these teams have any juice. None of them have any pizzazz. But what I like to look at for all these teams throughout the course of the season, I used to mention this, uh, John, on your radio show every every week when we talked about the Cubs, is the uh, run scored, runs against differential. So as I look at this division, White Sox, minus 20. Detroit, minus 23. uh, Kansas City, minus 10. So they're giving up more runs than they're scoring. You still have to score in these games, even if you have some pitching. So Minnesota's a plus 14 and Cleveland's plus five. Those teams are going to battle it out uh, all year. I, for me personally, just flip a coin. I, I would, you could take either one of those teams and I think that you'll be okay. That's really all I got to say about the American League Central. Okay, so let's go through our picks. Um, Sheriff Clark's going to flip a coin. Dad, you like the do you like the White Sox at plus yeah, three? White Sox. Plus yeah, 320. White Sox. Nate, you like the Twins? You better start hitting. Yep. Right, yeah, they're they're gonna need to uh, need to start hitting. I like um, I like the Guardians. All they do is win the division. I mean, the the plus 120 stakes, but every year they win the division. They're always in the hunt, and I don't like rooting for the Twins, not because of the Correa thing. And if you notice, dear listeners, how salty Dad still is about <laughs> Correa. <laughs> Leaving Houston, every night he checks the box score to see if Correa went 0 for 5. Like, I don't know anyone who's just checking the box score being like, oh, good, Correa only got one hit today. Yeah, went 0 for 5. So, he's, 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 hitting, he's, he's hitting 110. Yeah, so, it, John, you know. Yeah. John's like the mafia. You know, when you leave the family, <laughs> that's never forgiven. Yeah, unless it's Marwin Gonzalez. That was the one <laughs> one uh, person who. Or, is, or, jo- or George Springer. Forgiven. Because he yeah. stutters, or Billy yeah. Wagner, because he was you no, know, he was Billy Wagner. Those are the only three. Springer right. only got got away with it because he's got a speech impediment like I do. So I give him a pass. Other than that, you know, screw, screw Correa. Yeah, I mean, you should okay. be thrilled, well, John, that he that he's he, he's not playing well because he'd be not playing well for the Astros. <laughs> so, Patrick, if he wasn't playing well for if he was on the Astros right now, this would be twenty minutes about how. You know, his follow he's just gonna get swing. hot. <laughs> yeah, he's he's due. You just you don't, you know, he, he had, all he did, you know, he, well, this at bat was kind of you know, he got he got fooled on a change up and 
I mean, the defense is just, you can't, it's irreplaceable. I mean, it's just, you know. Leadership in the clubhouse. Of, right, yeah. This guy, everybody looks to him for leadership. He is the, he is the Astros culture. And then he leaves and Mentor. he's like, oh, he went over five. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, it's all a matter of perspective, as we know. This is a no-win situation. Got it. <laughs> no-win situation um, ever. You know, what is a win situation, though. Win-win, Dad, is Rosie's Gaming Emporium. There's a ton of opportunity there. Why don't you tell us about Rosie's, then we'll get to the AL West. Go to rosiegaming.com in Virginia. You're going to have so much fun. and loves to go. Actually, I'm going to uh, Chesapeake on Monday for, uh, for an event there. I'm going to sneak a little time in in Rosie's and Hampton. But then... Don't forget this Colonial Downs opening up July 13th, post time, 1.30 p.m., Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, one starting on July 13th, all the way through September 9th. They got the Virginia Oaks. They got the Virginia Derby. All that's there. Our suite is there, suite three, right by the finish line. Now, we move. This is this is the uh, – nobody does this in, a, in the world. We move our entire radio operation to our suite at Colonial Downs from July 13th to September 9th. So we're going to be there. Jack's coming. Nate, you got to come. We got to bring Sheriff Clark and Patrick's got to come with the blonde in our suite. Have so much fun. But right now, Rosie's Gaming, they got $500 million they give away in jackpots. Jack, you were talking earlier about the uh, the slot machines at the bar in Reno. And I was at that bar. It was, a, it was let me call it uh, rough and tumble, right? <laughs> that's, about, that's about what I would say. That was a rough and tumble bar you guys were at. It, it was uh, It was something else. But you were saying they don't really pay out. Rosie's the opposite. They paid out over $500 million. People can win 20, 30, 50, 100 large there. I know a couple of them. So you can have fun. They're all over Virginia. Go to rosiesgaming.com. Not only that, the culture there, it's fun. And uh, the marketing director, who's a friend of mine, Nate Mize, has really set a fun culture. It's clean. It's fun. Everybody's always smiling. Everybody's having a good time. Everybody's winning. A lot of winners there. Go to rosesgaming.com. And don't forget, Colonial Downs starting July 13th. Jack's coming. Nate, we got to fly you in. We're, we all got to go there. You're going to have so much fun. I pick a lot of winners there. So you're, you're going to have a blast. Most beautiful racetrack in America, Colonial Downs. Go to rosesgaming.com. I'll tell a quick story about the tight slot machines at that place in Reno. So one day the gaming person in charge of these slot machines came in to train the staff. Uh, Nate was, Nate was there. I was there. Everybody was there. And we had this guy, we'll call him Daryl. He sat at the end of the bar. He came in every day. Uh, Daryl, Daryl liked to drink a little bit. Daryl liked to gamble a lot. And he, he gambled on slots. He had like 40 bucks that he put in. If he lost it, he'd leave. Um, if he won, he'd cash out and leave. So kind of his system, but we had this wheel and it spun. So you, you could trigger this wheel as like a little TV thing. And it had, you know, $5, $20, all free play, thousand dollars in free play. And the thousand and the five are right next to each other. And so we're at a meeting, like a staff meeting. There's no one in the bar except for Daryl. He's at the other side of the bar. He kind of thought he was like part of Imperial, which we loved. We loved him. And um, the lady is like demonstrating the wheel. Um, she's like, okay, when the wheel triggers, this is what happens. So she triggers the wheel on the little video screen. And you can hear Daryl from the other side of the bar be like, come on, big money. Come on, big money. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's like a, it's a, it's a demonstration. Nobody's winning any money, right? He's like, come on, come on, come on. And, you know, we had been telling her that the slot machines and everything, that the payout was like, nobody was getting paid out. They were the tightest machines in Reno. And she's like, no, 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 watch. And she hits this thing and it's going, he's going, come on, come on, come on. And it gets to the thousand and it slows down and slows down. And then it ticks to the five. And you just hear Daryl at the other end, every time. <laughs> we were like, see, every time it's the, these are the tightest machines uh, everywhere. So uh, she was not happy with Daryl's antics at our staff meeting. So let's get um, to the American League West. I Let's just start with dad. Tell us why the Astros are going to win the World Series. <laughs> oh, this, gonna gonna log this, this, gonna <laughs> this, this is going to be a blow. Look, we got, we got two of our best players out right now. Michael Brantley's out. He's going to come back probably May 1st, end of end of April. He's rehabbing now in Florida. Altuve obviously had the the uh, the surgery on his on his thumb that got smashed um, in uh, the World Baseball League. He's not coming back probably till mid-June, but he'll be back certainly uh, somewhere 
in June or so. He's going to be out two months. Um, we've got McCullers, our number two or three starter. Uh, he's he's now rehabbing ag again. He had a little arm soreness. So three of our best players are out. So look, uh, we just want to go five hundred between now and like Sheriff says, May get her get her players back, get Rantley back, get Altuve back. Once we do that. We got the best starting pitching. We got the best relief pitching. We got one of the best closers in the major leagues. The other thing that's helping the Astros is getting rid of that shift because you're getting hits now from Kyle Tucker and you're getting hits from Jordan, who you simply didn't have the past couple of seasons because they, they, they'd hit hard ground balls into that shift. Now they can't have it. They're going through. We got a good young team. I love our catcher. Uh, uh, this is, this is the, probably the most solid club in the major leagues. Now I can't. You can't bet him to win the division because of like you know, like you have to minus play stuff. Yeah, the, so you can't do that. I bet him to win, and I bet him to win the World Series at six to one again. In fact, I Ooh. bet him at six. Uh, Mom bet him at plus six fifty. She she uh, waited. Uh, she bet him after Altuve got hurt and went up up a little bit. But um, look, you know, Seattle, uh, whatever. Smoke and mirrors. Te Texas spends money. They're going nowhere. Um, Oakland's going to lose 110 games again. And who does that leave the angels, which has got basically two players. So, uh, the Astros are going to win this division again. Nate. Uh, there's a lot of what John says that I agree with. I mean, I think that, yeah, there's no value in betting on the Astros when the AL West, um, if you believe in miracles, I guess you can bet on Oakland at 350 to one to win the <laughs> AL West, which is pretty fun odds considering that this is baseball and anything can happen. And there's only four teams that they have to beat to do that. And there's still 350 to one. Um, from a betting perspective, I mean, I guess you'd have to, I guess it, it'd be the Mariners. You hope that they found a way to hit. I mean, they made the playoffs last year and they were the, second lowest batting average um in the majors and they still made the playoffs on the strength of their pitching you hope the pitching is still there if you bet the mariners and that they find out how to hit a little bit and can put a little bit of help around julio rodriguez who's been unbelievable uh i mean i guess i guess my pause with the angels at plus 500 i think that in a typical year there might be value there i mean they do have the two best players in baseball after all with mike trout and um and shohei otani my my concern with betting the Angels is that ticket could be dead by the tread, trade deadline if they trade Otani because it looks like he doesn't want to re-sign um, with the Angels. It looks like he's probably going to hit free agency. Uh, and I think there's a real chance that if if the season's not going in a way that they want, that they just they just, they unload him at some point this season. So that would be my concern with the Angels is what like the Shohei Otani leaving is sort of the elephant in the room for them organizationally. Um, and I'm not sure that he'll play a full season with LA right now. Yeah. Shohei Otani on the Padres in August. That'll be fun. Right. Sheriff yeah. Clark, what do you see here? Um, you know, John, at some point, the air goes out of the balloon with these teams that stay hot for four or five years. They stay near yeah. the top. Your lineup right now resembles a mass unit. You're talking about all the guys who are on the DL list. You can talk about anybody on the field right now. Um, you know, the division itself is not that strong. So, you know, they'll contend for the division. Might win. I still think Seattle, though, is going to uh, give Houston a run. Here's the other thing, too, that, that changes this year. The scheduling. Houston's not going to be able to get fat anymore off of getting to play Seattle, Oakland, Texas, and the Dodgers. I'm sorry, not the Dodgers, the L.A. Angels. They're not going to be able to do that this year. So we might see something with a different schedule now where you might have to go out and beat some good baseball teams. You don't just get fat off the division. But I still, you know, Houston will be in the run for the division. Uh, there's a reason, though, why we haven't had a repeat of winner of the World Series. Actually, in, in, in any sport that I can think of, we haven't had a repeat winner, including the Masters in a very long time because it's very hard to do. So since the Astros won it last year, I would bet against them for the World Series winning it again this year. So you're right about the schedule. They don't, the Astros don't get to. 19 games their... against the A's won't happen this right. year. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. But they can get fat playing the Cubs more. So there's also, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, we'll, we'll see, we'll see where that, where that takes them. Uh, you know, always, Bring it on. always, yeah, always fun to uh, beat the Cubs at Wrigley and watch those fans. Um, wine Patrick, you know, I got to agree with Sheriff Clark on this. And this is something I, I probably should have thrown out earlier um, in the UFC. There have been immediate rematches after title changes. And the chances of recapturing your championship after you've just lost it, three guys and 11 losers. So three winners and 11 losers <laughs> turning right back around to try to win their championship back. I, I got to agree with Sheriff Clark on that because once you win, that is you, you've reached the, the penultimate of your career. A lot of guys don't care. Now they're looking for that huge contract <laughs> and getting out of there. And they don't care anymore. They got their ring and they're done. I love the Mariners at plus 2,200 to win the whole thing. I thought what? that the, the they whole caught thing? Me. Wait a minute. You're, yeah. an, you're an Astro fan. You're, you're like, you're going to, you're going to pick against our team. You're like, you're oh, like, here we go. Here we Perry go. Picking against the Cowboys. Oh boy. You're, you're, you grew up with me watching Astro game. You're an Astro fan. You got all their gear and now you're going to pick the Mariners on, on TV. Are you kidding they were me? So no, we're, we're, we're not, oh we're not my on God. TV. Well, not on TV yeah. yet. Yeah, yeah wherever we yeah, are. We're on, we're on YouTube, um, where you can make all sorts of interesting uh, predictions and analysis, and uh, nobody seems to bat an eye. So I would say that the reason I like the Mariners is I think they have a solid club. I think they know how to win. I think that they can sneak in with a wild card. They got so hot last year. They would have beat the Astros had Jordan not hit that home run. That was the closest that, series. Well, that's total the baloney. That was one game. Like they no, didn't win a game. No. They were out. They were out playing the Astros the whole time. This team has the ability to go, and that's a that's a terrific plus money plus twenty two hundred. I'm not betting the Astros to win the World Series at plus three twenty five or six to one. Six to one. Like, yeah, six to one earlier. Now they're you know yeah okay they're okay they're seven to one now. You know I got to bet my mortgage to like make that any interested, <laughs> like an interesting, you know, bet when I can just throw a little bit of money on, on the Mariners. So I, I love the Mariners at plus 2,200. I think that's a really solid bet. I think they can win the whole thing. And when they do, I'm going to play back this tape over and over and over and over again, uh, because that's what you do when you handicap, you find you the one time you write. You can't you pick against your team. I it's just did. <laughs> Juju, you can't do it. You're going to go did. the same way that Nate goes. You guys picking against your team. Oh, I'm a Dallas fan. I'm a Dallas fan. Who do you like this week? Dallas minus three uh, giants. I mean, what the <laughs> hell are you doing? Like, how do you guys, I don't understand your generation. I really don't get it. I mean, you are an Astro fan. You have all the Astro gear. We talk about the Astros every, almost every other day when I call you up, but now you're sitting here picking Seattle. I mean, what the hell? Isn't our mission statement like picking winners for people, not just like picking our team because we like them? You can't pick. That's got nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, there's Sheriff uh, Clark. He has his cup. This is why I like Sheriff Clark. He has his cub shirt on, right? Where is him? Right? We talk every day, right? We text each other. How many times, Sheriff, when the, the Astros are like losing World Series, you're you know, you're texting me, talking me off the ledge. See, that's what friends do, right? They support each other's teams, right? When Dallas got beat that opening game, he was all upset. And I'm like, hey, you guys are going to be fine. Remember, remember that? I don't go go around. You can't go around picking against your home team. You're as bad as your brother. <laughs> but I but I refuse to wear, walk around with rose-colored glasses, John. When it yeah. comes to my, I find you're a flaw analogy, here, John. pick at them. Right, yeah, like... Clark was like apprehensive about picking Duke over Oral Roberts. So <laughs> yeah, you're the only one, you're the only one who's like, who can't See? figure out that sometimes your team loses, that that happens yeah. sometimes. And it's hard to repeat And the Astros are banged up. And I like the Mariners plus 2,200 lock it in. I'm going to go to DraftKings right now. As soon as I get to a state where I, where that is allowed and um, I'll just lock in that bet. Go ahead, dad. And uh, take us out here. We're past the time. Listen, guys, uh, I want to thank us. Uh, th thank you guys for doing this. I want to thank our sponsors for really making this uh, possible. Uh, Colonial Downs, my good friend, Nate Mize, Iggy at, uh, at <laughs> Iggy at uh, Iggy at Ignacio at Ignite45.com. I want to thank them. Patrick Asselon, Patrick, thank you very much. Really, well, really appreciate uh, 
the support that you have given us. DraftKings also want to thank them. And of course, Birch Gold, and I'm all into gold because I don't want what happened to me in 2008 to happen again. So um, you can, uh, easy to get information on Birch Gold, just text Godzilla to 989898. Get the free information kit on gold and silver. You make the decision. Guys, thank you for being with us today. Uh, I had a lot of fun and uh, I, I, I'm going to text your brother as soon as I get off and tell him that you picked against the Astro. You picked Seattle. I just can't believe it. Okay. In fact, I'm not going to, in fact, I got to call you on Easter, but I'm still pissed. Okay. But, uh, but I do have to say, thank you for sending me the fairly Dickinson garb, which I actually here. I got, I got to show it. I didn't put on because it was too hot here. Live but, TV uh, folks. I get home <laughs> and here's what, here's Your what, here's, Here's what here's what mom's got on the table for me as soon as I get home. The Fairleigh Dickinson uh 3X sweats, very comfortable <laughs> that I got <laughs> my son Jack as a surprise gift for Easter. So Jack, thank you. Guys, you're welcome. They didn't have Kay Bannon so. and <laughs> <laughs> as Boy, as it went. <laughs> Easter at the Fredericks home is gonna be very interesting. Yeah, uh -huh. they're all pissing me off. All of them. I got <laughs> one guy texting me. The little guy texting me, telling me about uh, we suck, and telling me about how good the Braves are. And then I got the older guy picking Seattle. <laughs> Can we just end this show? Let's go to yeah, War Room. Well, Stephen K. Bannon is next. Should move down here to South Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you next week, guys. Happy Easter, guys. You too. Happy Easter.